Hello, um, we are happy to have you all here. And uh, to get things started, I would like to first introduce you to the uh, director of UCAR Scientific Partnerships and Services Center, as well as CPAS, Hannah Moriello. Thank you, Dawn. Welcome, everyone. We are delighted to have you attend the CPAS Discovery Seminar Series. This series began to share the impressive breadth and depth of the research from CPAS scientists who study the entirety of Earth system science. We have scientists who do everything from explore our ocean depths to fly into hurricanes to take critical measurements to heliophysicists modeling coronal mass ejections to those who unravel the mysteries of the Arctic. And we want to share this with the public, the INCA UCAR community and also our many colleagues at universities across the globe. Just to orient you all, we are using Slido uh, located below the presentation screen so that you can post questions for our speaker at any time during the seminar. Questions will be revealed later during the Q&A portion of the seminar. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you today speaker, Dr. Weigu Han, who is a UCAR CPAS project scientist at NOAA's National Environmental Satellite Data and Informational Service, NESTIS, where he serves as a data manager. His research interests encompass big earth data, earth data management, cloud computing, web GIS, remote sensing image processing and analysis, and geospatial cyber infrastructure. Dr. Han has published over 70 scientific publications and has been a reviewer for many academic journals. He has been the recipient of numerous awards, including the 2017 Nestis Team Award for Outstanding IT and Engineering Employees of the Year. He is an IEEE senior member and served as the co-chair of the Earth Science Informatics Technical Committee of IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society, GRSS, from 2019 to 2021. Researchers and developers are faced with spending too much time and resources on discovering, downloading, and managing the required Earth observational data. Acquiring, managing, and distributing huge volumes of Earth observation data in a timely and quality manner to address requirements and lower infrastructure costs within an organization is always a challenge in the age of big data. An enterprise level data repository is a practical solution to meeting this challenge. The STAR, which is the Center for Satellite Applications and Research Central Data Repository, SCDR, is such a scalable and integrated repository to acquire, manipulate, and disseminate various types of near real-time Earth observation data effectively and efficiently. Today, Dr. Hahn will speak to us on SCDR, a centralized Earth observation data repository to facilitate research and de development. Welcome, Wego. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this seminar and uh, thanks Hannah for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, uh, today and I will give a brief introduction to STAR and then I will present STAR's central data repository as CDR CEDAR. And then next, I will focus on CEDA metrics analysis. And uh, at last, I, and I will give some typical CEDA applications. And the first is about the uh, law Nestis. And the Nestis is made up of numerous offices. And each office is manages different areas of satellite, uh, satellite op operations and uh, acquisitions. And, uh, environmental data and information. And the STAR uh, Center for Satellite Applications and Research is the science arm of the NESTIS. 
and it supports nesties and NOAA missions to access current conditions and predict future changes on Earth and, and to understand the long-term changes in the environment. And the STARS mission is to use the innovative science and applications to transform satellite observations of the Earth into meaningful information essential to societies environment, uh, involving environmental security and economic decision. Teams develop and help maintain about over 1,400 products on atmosphere, land, ocean, uh, cryosphere, and others derived from satellite uh, Earth observations. And uh, there is a product catalog available in STARS website. So satellite Earth observation data, uh, the EU data is the backbone of STARS research and uh, development activities. And like other research organizations, and we face the, the similar uh, challenges in the big data era, like the increasing IT costs and the limited budget, and the growing satellite EU data needs. And uh, the EU data management is time consuming and labor intensive. So, and uh, how to share the EU data across the multi, uh, multiple teams and projects, and the high, the high ex expected uh, project outcomes and the organization strat strategic goals. So uh, organization level data repository is a practical solution to address these challenges. So to build a, a organization level data repository, and an organization level data management strategy and the procedure should be made. And uh, a scalable and reliable IT infrastructure should be constructed. And a comprehensive uh, data management system and tools should be built. And uh, high support should be provided. So, uh, STAR uh, established a data manager group and which is composed of the members from each science group. The group is responsible for overseeing the data science across the organization and investigate, investigate IT infrastructure and defining data management policies and procedures like the new data product requirements and the retail the outdated data product. And the co coordinating data requirements from different groups and the data flow from uh, different uh, data sources. And the guiding data management system development and the proposal future system implementation. So, and also promoting the data sharing and the dissemination with the organization. So a scalable IT infrastructure is vital to build a data repository. And the data repository should be integrated with the organization IT infrastructure and the data flow landscape. And also uh, supporting the long-term requirements of the EU data products uh, with consistent interfaces of data requests and access and reducing overall costs of the organization uh, with IT resources and making your data, uh, data products available across applications, teams, and projects. And the hardware and the software should be up upgraded uh, routinely in accordance with the organization policies and rules. And uh, uh, set, uh, select EO data from different sources uh, in different uh, uh, landing zones for easy tracking and monitoring. So we built the Star Central Data Repository, uh, named uh, CDR. Uh, it aims 
at streamlining, uh, streamlining the process of the EU data retrieval, ingestion, management, and consumption, uh, providing robust and convenient access to near real-time EU data uh, related to the science research and development. And it's uh, serving as a centralized EU data repository to avoid duplication of data acquisition, storage, and management. So by collecting and managing satellite EO data, and these big data features are critically considered in the design and the implementation, like the data sources, data size, and the different data formats, and the different levels of data, and the different interfaces like FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, and the data update uh, frequency and the download policy of the data provider, like the concurrent threads per user or per, per IP address. So here is the uh, CEDAR uh, system architecture. And uh, uh, we download the Sentinel 1 and 2 data Sentinel International Access Hub, and uh, we opted uh, the Sentinel 3 and 6 data from the UMIT uh, cast. And uh, uh, Gravity pushed the uh, GPS uh, uh, NPP and the lower 20 data to our FTP host, and we pull uh, uh, lower series and ghost series data and meta. Uh, B and C data from last day's PDA. And we also pull the uh, UCA uh, geo -opt uh, optics data from the PDA. And the corres uh, corresponding server will process the uh, received data according to their format and uh, distribute, distribute to the data. Uh, to our uh, network file system and uh, ingest the, the information to the uh, central database. And uh, then and the user can uh, use the uh, uh, utility and the web portal and the web service to request the, and the locate the files they need uh, directly in their uh, program. And the CETA, uh, CETA it also uh, provides the uh, Himawari data, uh, central data through Star's FTP server and the CoastWatch website to other agencies like uh, uh, NWS and the Navy and uh, other project partners. Uh, here is our uh, uh, database schema. And we use the PostgreSQL and the Postgres as the database management system. And the database uh, are tuned from the table structure, software, and the hardware uh, configuration. And we set up the primary and the secondary databases for data replication. And we use the B tree and the GIST as index. And the partition method to uh, split the massive uh, uh, table into smaller table. So operations can be uh, performed uh, against the individual uh, small table to improve the uh, performance. Uh, so far, and uh, CID has collected more than 300 uh, uh, satellite EO data sites, uh, including the uh, data from the NOAA uh, satellites, like the Ghost series satellites, the GPS series, and uh, uh, the DMSP F series, uh, and more this data from NASA, and the Sentinel data from uh, Sentinel one, two from ESA, and three and six from UMSH. 
and the metab uh, metab A B C from the UMI set, uh, radar set uh, uh, from the Canadian uh, Space Agency, and the HIMAWARI data from the uh, GMA GCAMC from JAXA, and uh, the inside three D and three D R from uh, India Space Research Organization. And we also collect some uh, model forecast data, like the TFS data from the uh, AWS uh, INSEP. Every day, and the data collect about uh, uh, about one uh, million and two hundred uh, two hundred thousand files from different sources, and inside about eight terabytes. And currently, and uh, there are over uh, two hundred million files registered in the SIDA uh, system, and the overall uh, the total size is overall one thousand terabyte, and uh, the data volume is still increasing with more data from the new satellites, like the GOES uh, GOES eighteen and uh, the GPS uh, GPSS two. So currently, ANSID provides three consistent uh, interfaces for satellite data requests. And the first one is the command line interface uh, named the SID files. Uh, it can be executed with options like a uh, Linux command. So you can look at, uh, look at the files of interest uh, with the full path directly. Uh, this uh, utility uh, is also provided by uh, pro provided with the detailed help information and example. Uh, here is an example of a request uh, JPSS DATAM decom decompose cloud products uh, derived from um, SMPP, and the user can specify the start and the end date time and the area of interest. And then the results will be returned with one second. The second in, uh, interface is a web portal. Uh, uh, this web portal provides uh, intuitive and interactive the, uh, web interfaces to, uh, uh, to search the files. So this portal is a uh, Ajax powered uh, web application, and we built it uh, using an open source uh, JavaScript framework, uh, X.js. The third interface is a lightweight RESTful web service. Uh, so uh, this uh, this web service uh, supports uh, different. Uh, uh, programming languages like Python and uh, Java. So it, it also can be utilized uh, by command line tools like the WGH or CO. And uh, the output can be uh, returned in multiple uh, formats like the plain text, uh, XML and uh, JSON. Here an example of the uh, Python program. And the output output is returned in JSON format. Uh, here, here is a part of the result. So next, and uh, I will uh, introduce the CIDA metrics. And the CIDA uh, has become uh, has become a necessary satellite data source with this star. Uh, so collect uh, its request information and the visualized information uh, help us understand the user trend and the display the output of uh, outcome of the SIDA system and improve the uh, data management and uh, we can invest, investigate uh, user uh, activity and behavior and uh, to ensure the system is stable and uh, reliable.
And uh, here is a figure from our metric system. And from this figure, we can see the data request uh, uh, every day. And uh, there are over then 300,000 requests every day uh, during the uh, September. And we can also learn the uh, minimum, maximum, average requests uh, by day of the week and by hour of the day. So we also uh, rank the data uh, request. We can see uh, the top seven data products requested during the last month. And it, it, it includes the various imagery data uh, in different bands and uh, their uh, geolocation product and the various moderate resolution data product and the GOS R ABI readers uh, data for full disk. And the two save the IT resources and uh, optimize the data management. And uh, we also uh, we also have uh, have a, a data retirement policy. And if the data has a lot of B requests or uh, seldom uh, requested during the past uh, 12 months, and uh, we will we will remove the data from our system. So we also uh, we also analyze the uh, user activities. So here is an, uh, our, uh, an aggregated request by day of week. We can see and on. Tuesday, and there are more data requests. And the next is uh, 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 next is Thursday. So we can also see the uh, request by hour of day. We can see and uh, uh, from midnight to uh, 4 a.m. and there are more uh, data requests. Uh, the reason is that uh, because and user need to check if all files for previous days are available because of the data latency. And normally, for example, the the data latency for the GPSS data is from one hour to three hours. So uh, currently there are over 100 uh, uh, internal users uh, uh, request the uh, data from the seeder uh, from different uh, hosts. And there are more than 16 active users who request the files of interest over than 1000 times uh, per day. So, and uh, we can see under the seeder Capacity can meet the current uh, uh, satellite EO data requirements of star users. So we can also uh, analyze activities of the uh, specific users. And here is a request trend of a specified user. We can see, and the user request is is similar in every day of week, and the, the user only requests the various image data every day. So it will help us to. Uh, extract uh, uh, valuable insights from user activities. So next, and uh, I will give some typical seed applications with star. Uh, 
uh, use the real time goes 60 data from Cedar. The star geo color team produces the real time um, ghost images. Uh, these images have been uh, popularly cited by the public media. Uh, the data latency is about uh, 10 to 45 minutes. And here is an uh, uh, animation of uh, Hurricane Ian hit the coast of the South Carolina on September 30th. And uh, uh, here is another uh, animation of the Hurricane Julia status on October 9th. And you will see that as a data source of the ghost ABI and uh, Himawari NHA data. The sea, uh, sea surface temperature team produces the uh, daily uh, sea, surface, uh, sea surface temperature data from the GOES-16 and uh, the HIMAR-8 data. And update the GPS virus data from CEDAR uh, the land surface temperature team produces uh, the daily daytime and the nighttime um, global uh, sea surface, uh, land surface temperature data from the lower 20 years data. Uh, the vegetation team and use the uh, CEDA as a data source and uh, they produce the uh, global greening data as uh, this is weekly data. Uh, here is the uh, uh, image for the uh, week of 40th uh, this year. And uh, they also uh, produce uh, the vegetation health index, uh, index data for the continental uh, USA uh, this is a, uh, this is also for the uh, 40th of week this year. Uh, the ocean color team and use the uh, 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 as the uh, GPSS data source and uh, they produce the ocean color uh, uh, for the entire world. And here is an image for the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Uh, the polyvalent team uh, use uh, uh, VR state, uh, NPP VR state to produce the uh, near real time um, uh, polyvalent data for the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. Uh, next is the sub products. Uh, the ocean wind team uses the uh, data of a red search and the uh, center one data produce the uh, ocean wind data and here is the image for the long island area uh, the other sub products is the cis uh, also uh, produced by the same team, and they use the uh, radar set and the cell one data to, to produce the CS uh, coverage data for the Arctic area. Uh, next is a uh, uh, blended uh, product. Uh, here is a uh, global blended uh, soil moisture data uh, this global uh, soil moisture data is blended from the uh, soil moisture data of, uh, of ESA SMOS and Metal, uh, Metal, Metal B ASCAT and uh, GCAM AMSR.
Uh, here is a blended sea surface temperature. It's a level four uh, product. Uh, this product is derived from the uh, JPSS VIRS and the METOP AVHR, uh, GOST ABI, and uh, Himawari NHA. Uh, SIDA is also the source of the multiple satellite data for STARS ICVS team, an uh, integrated calibration validation system. Uh, here is an example, uh, here is a user interface of the uh, intersensor comparison between GOES 16 ABI and uh, uh, MPP CREAS instrument. So next is the future direction of CEDA. And now and the CEDA is being integrated with the Nestis Common Cloud Framework, NCCF. And we are involving CEDA in the cloud computing environment and uh, utilizing cloud resources to improve uh, functionality of CEDA. Um, but we also see that CEDA still uh, uses the traditional uh, file system and uh, re uh, relational data management, uh, database management system to manage uh, big EO data. And uh, we are uh, investi uh, investigating new solutions for big EO data management. So last in conclusion, and uh, uh, CEDA collects and uh, distributes near real-time EO data in a timely and efficient manner, and it helps researchers produce bad products for weather prediction, atmospheric, ocean, and land surface monitoring without delay. And it facilitates the organization wide research and development activities, and it greatly reduces the resource costs of storing and managing big EO data. So that's all. So any questions? Okay. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us, uh, Dr. Han. Um, it's truly amazing the massive amounts of data that this uh, work that you're doing is making more usable and accessible to people. Um, now, folks, we are going to begin our Q&A portion of today's seminar. I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the QR code. Uh, please enter your questions here for our speaker. Uh, while you are doing that, I would like to invite you all to attend our next seminar on Wednesday, November 16th with CPAS scientists Kathy Tedesco, Anne Christine Zinken, and Cheyenne Steinberger uh, at NOAA's, who are situated at NOAA's uh, Global Ocean Monitoring and Observing, um, which is GOMO. And they will be speaking on the frontiers in global ocean observing. Uh, let's see, looks like we do have a question for you. Um, Dr. Han, is everything inside, so he's making reference to one of your diagrams, is everything inside the blue box on the SCDR diagram posted in the same place? For example, on Prem in particular cloud. Uh, yes, actually, and uh, 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 the whole system uh, is hosted with our in, uh, internal network, and uh, we collect all data from different sources, but store the data in our network file system. So we use the different servers to handle uh, the data from different uh, sources. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Um, can you explain more on who can utilize SCDR, the SCDR system and how can a student access it? So this is a, a more of a practical question. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, and uh, <laughs> I got uh, similar uh, questions before and uh, now, and uh, this, term, this system is accessed only within star. So, you know, and uh, we, uh, as I said in the slides, and uh, we provide three different interfaces for user to request the data, the command line, the web portal, and uh, the web service. So um, uh, now, and uh, we are uh, integrating um, our system uh, with uh, Nesting's cloud, uh, a common cloud uh, framework. So I, I'm not sure in the future and if the system will be open to the public, so every everyone can access. But now and only, only star scientists can access them, access it. Okay, um, I'm just going to follow up a little bit with that. I really appreciated the examples that you gave us of how the different data sets and the applications that were created um, concerning the uh, SCDR information. Can students access that? You know how you had some that were like soil moisture and Arctic Sea. Can can they access some of the products that are uh, created? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, and for so uh, Insta website and uh, there is a, a product uh, catalog uh, in uh, web uh, in web web pages, and so uh, in. In that catalog, and there are the uh, data sources uh, actually users can access, you know, and like the lower class and uh, the uh, the Ocean Watch um, and uh, some OSPO websites, and uh, you user can access the data there. Uh, and the Star also provides some products uh, available in our FTP servers. So uh, 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 for the uh, uh, ghost, uh, uh, for the geo color images generated from the ghost uh, 60 data and then inside the web uh, page and the first page and uh, user can see that images. So user can direct, from, uh, direct the images from there directly. So, you know, and uh, <laughs> for different the sense teams and uh, they, product, uh, they, they provided the, the uh, products uh, to different uh, uh, to different parlors. So you know, and uh, we, I, I'm not sure, and uh, who uh, who is uh, responsible for uh, distributing uh, the final products? But you know, I, I think of, of from different sources, and not only Star. Excellent. Thank you very much, Wegu. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we have more. We we have a follow up question for Peter. What tools are you using to capture and analyze your metrics for the whole SEDR system, such as K8S tools or other? Ah, uh, it's a great question. And actually, and uh, we develop. Uh, uh, the tool to analyze uh, to capture and uh, analyze the metrics and uh, actually and uh, we capture the user requests information which includes the user name the host name and the data product and the file number file size and store such information in the database and then we, we develop a, a web portal to retrieve such information uh, from the database and uh, display it in the web portal like a dashboard. So we we did not use any other tools. That one, you know, and uh, uh, we tried some tools before, but you know, and it's not, uh, it, 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 those tools did not fit our uh, requirements. So, you know, and, uh, we so we develop uh, these tools by ourselves. Excellent. Um, do we have any more questions? Okay. 
Uh, with the SCDR system, do you know how much more efficient it is in general in terms of getting usable data to the scientific consumer? So this is a pretty big question, I would say. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 this is a great question. You know, and actually, and I just give you some uh, some uh, some numbers, you know, and uh, uh, for the GPSS data and in uh, in our system and the data latency is from one hour to three hours. And for the lower class, it's an archive data center. The latency is over than six hours. And for the ghost, uh, the ghost 60 data and uh, ghost uh, 80 data, and the latency is less than 50 minutes. So, you know, and, uh, and for the HEMOR data, and uh, uh, I think uh, previously, and uh, we get the uh, HEMOR data. Uh, from the GMA uh, Hemore cloud uh, directly, and the latency is less than five minutes. So, so uh, I, I mean, and the the data latency is an important uh, factor for our users. You know, and they need the real time uh, satellite EO data. So I can see, and uh, in CDR, and our latency is better than other data sources for our uh, scientists. That's really and, uh, with the other way and uh, for our request and uh, uh, for each request and uh, the request will be handled with one second. User just input the comment and the results uh, with less than one second. And if you if the scientists get the data from other sources, they need to download and then organize. And <laughs> I think it's 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 it it will take a much longer time. Those are really impressive improvements. It looks like we have another question. Apologies for so many questions. Um, just think this is very cool. We do too, and we appreciate your question, Peter. Um, do you see the system possibly enabling larger scale analysis for EO data in a, a performant way, or would NCCF integration be necessary first? <sighs> uh, uh, it's a great question. You know, um, now we are uh, uh, we are uh, integrating uh, our system uh, with the NCCF, but uh, you know, and uh, we also uh, we also learned from the uh, we also learned the uh, requirements from our scientists and they said uh, uh, with the NCCF and. Uh, they cannot use their current program. Maybe the, the program is is in Fortree or IDL, but NCCF uh, does not support it now. So we, uh, in our pilot system, and we have provided the similar functions of CEDAR with NCCF, user can, uh, user can request the data in the same way like uh, uh, our current uh, system, but uh, they cannot uh, uh, they cannot use their pro their current program uh, with ACCF. So <laughs> I, I, I think and uh, we will try to make our system uh, uh, same, uh, we will try to make our system uh, stable and reliable with NCCF, but we cannot, I cannot see how NCCF will support the scientist uh, analysis program. Peter, I hope that answers your question and thank you for your excellent questions. Um, do we have any more? Well, 
I will just say, Dr. Han, you have clued me in to a whole realm of, um, of information that I certainly did not know anything about before. And I, I sincerely appreciate your work. Um, I would like to thank everyone uh, for coming to the uh, UCAR CPAS Discovery Seminar and remind you all to go to our website to find out about future talks at cpaess.ucar.edu. And you will also be able to find a link to this talk after it's uploaded to YouTube later this week. And uh, Dr. Han, our sincere thanks to you for sharing your important research with us. Uh, thank you also to Brett Batterman of UCAR Multimedia Services for his invaluable assistance. And I hope to see everyone on November 16th for our next CPAS Discovery Seminar. Thank you so much and good afternoon to everyone. Okay, thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much, Hannah.